All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is for you too. This is Pastor Dow. You know, I want to go ahead and add my professional opinion in on this, uh, and I believe that my opinion is very professional since I profess Christ. This is Michael Sam's situation right here. Um, it's really no different than anything else that we're dealing with in the world. But I like to deal with the statement of him saying that I just want to be known as Michael Sam, the football player, and not Michael Sam, the gay man, or something something like that on the end. I, I didn't, I, I may have got the quote at the end wrong, um, but don't hold me to it, but you understand what I'm saying. In other words, this man wants to be known as a football player and not for his lifestyle. First of all, I'm going to tell you flat out that if that was the case, then he never would have come out of the so-called proverbial closet if he only wanted to be known as Michael Sam, the football player. But there's an agenda behind this. I guarantee, there's an agenda. I guarantee there's an agenda. And now he has the backing and support of Oprah Winfrey, who is one of the most powerful women in the world. Now, I don't know Oprah personally, but I do know her father. Because Vernon Winfrey used to cut my hair ever since I was a, a, a little bitty nard. Matter of fact, I think he was the first one to give me a haircut. And he cut my hair all the way up well off into um, I got old until I went into the military. Because his barbershop was just two streets over from where I grew up at in East Nashville. And um, so I know her father. Um, and we talked about her a few occasions, it, even after I got off into the military and I came home on leave, I would go down there and visit and he would be happy to see me. I'm happy to see him. And we talk about various things, different things, because I mean, after all, he's known me all my life. Um, and, um, but I just thought I'd put that in there to let you know that I'm, um, but anyway, let's get back to this situation. So anyway, now he's got the backing and power of Oprah Winfrey. Now I'm telling you that the NFL is full of gay people. Um, and in the NFL, it's better off hush. Now, I'm letting you know right now. This guy, first of all, number one, if you was co-defensive player of the year in the SEC, which is one of the most prolific, um, intense football conferences in America, SEC is just flat out domination. That's all there is to it in the South. They just dominate. And for, for him to get that type of accolades to be co-defensive player of the year, if he never would have came out because he only wanted to be known as Michael Sam, the football player. Are right, you following me? Guess what? Guess what? He would have got drafted in the second, probably third round. But since he came out, the NFL, the league is letting you know. And this, all this is about marketing. This man is getting ready to be filthy rich based upon the choice and decision he's made to live his life. And because the gay agenda is pushing itself. Now, you notice, we have so-called freedom of speech in this country. And somebody from the Miami Dolphins tweeted and said, horrible. Because two men were kissing Michael Sam and his I don't know what you want to call them. They were kissing on national TV for everybody to see. Everybody to see. Um, and when they start swapping spit right there on national TV for everybody to see, this football player tweeted horrible. They fined him and suspended him. Now, you tell me. Now, I'm going to tell you. All you people in the NFL, you better keep your mouth shut because you are under a forced gag order. And if you say anything contrary to this man's lifestyle right here, you're going to be charged with hate speech. You're probably going to lose that, that nice paying job you got hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So you better start thinking, do you want to make the money or do you want to go ahead and speak your mind? Because if you speak your mind, it's going to cost you because the NFL is not going to tolerate stuff like that. And let me tell you something. You know, I played sports growing up. <clears throat> and when I got in the military, it was really hectic. And being around men, are you following me? Being around men. Um, if you have any type of feminine traits in you, um, being around men, it's not going to go well for you. It, at least in my day growing up, it's not going to go well because it's not accepted. Uh, my days and my stench in the military, 
uh, unheard of. You couldn't even detect um, what you call somebody of an alternative lifestyle because it just didn't happen. I just, as a matter of fact, I didn't know anybody uh, because, and I'm telling you the type of stuff I was in. I, I was when I was in my, in the airborne units, there were no women in our units. Not, not we didn't even see a woman all day long because they simply just could not do the training. They just could not do it. Um, they just could not do what we do. It just it just impossible. So you didn't see them there. I, I, when I went to Germany, now it was a difference. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was no women in that unit either. Matter of fact, I can't think of a unit that I've ever been in in the 10 years I was in the military where there was a woman in it. Come to think about it. And in the 82nd, if you saw, if I saw a woman, it's because I went up to um, uh, PAC, not in our, our, our unit there, but I went up um, there to do some paperwork or something like that, or or maybe I was coming back from um, um, where well, they were rigging, rigging shoots and stuff like that. Uh, other than that, we didn't see none, none. I didn't see a woman. I didn't see a woman soldier on a daily basis, um, uh, unless you went way on the other end and down in the 18th Airborne Corps. You went way down on the other end. But anyway, um, but I'm telling you right now, this alternative lifestyle is setting the agenda for all forms of acceptance in the United States of America. Um, so you people continue to keep on having your opinions. It's going to cost you. Even now, even now here in this secular world, if you work at a job and you, you give your opinion, now they can talk to you. I, I've noticed this, that they can say anything they want to you. They can entice you to say something um, that you will defend yourself. And the first thing they do is go run to the authorities and they don't even, they don't even question what they say. They automatically take their side and they fire you. That's what they do. They fire you. And that's the type of power and influence. And when you throw somebody like Oprah Winfrey behind this Michael Sam, he's getting ready to get on this TV show. This 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 getting ready to be one of the richest homosexuals that there is in the world. Um, forget about the football player. It's just for the mere fact that he came out. And the NFL, I'm telling you, you NFL players, you better keep your mouth shut if you want to continue to keep making all that moolah. You better keep your mouth shut. How is it that this guy unknown, all of a sudden his jersey is, is almost passing up the jersey sales of uh, Johnny Manziel? And also while I'm there, let me get on the Cleveland Browns organization. Johnny Manziel is, is a, no doubt he's, he's a good football player. A whole hell of a lot better football player than Tim Tebow. Um, and the Browns get up there and they're going to play tough guy with this guy. You know what I mean? Um, now I'm gonna tell you, he's gonna probably end up fitting in the mold uh, of the like this Seattle Seahawks quarterback um, uh, Russell Wilson, which you could tell that, that even in his collegiate level and stuff, that this man was just a good quarterback, very, very thoughtful man, got it down. Um, and, and of course, I think that Cleveland Browns they're approaching this all wrong. Of course, I mean, why in the world did you draft him in the first place? Should just put him somewhere. I tell you the reason why they draft him because see these teams that are sorry. Uh, like like the Rams and the Browns, they've got to be able to put butts in those stadium seats somehow because they can't do it by the play. They can't do it by the play what's on the field, other players and stuff. So they have to do it by other means and stuff. And this is all about making money. That, them owners don't care if they go to the Super Bowl and win or not. The NFL is a cash cow. Do y'all folks understand? What other job in the world do you know that you can put 53 men on a roster and bare minimum pay them $300,000 a year. They ain't a man that, 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 I mean, um, attorneys that actually work in, in uh, good law firms and stuff. And I'm talking about where well, there ain't no such thing as a good law firm. That's the kind of money they make. Um, but man, you turn around and put that kind of cash into a young 20 year old hands. Is, oh man. Uh, uh, uh. But we're watching a paradigm shift. We're watching the shift. We're watching everything that used to be totally unacceptable in this country. We're watching it become acceptable. Uh, whether you like it, lump it, believe it or not. Um, what's amazing to me is we live in a, and it is what they taught themselves as, a Christian country. And I agree with that 100%. Um, 
but we're watching even the voice of the Christians um, being diminished. And they're forced, now they are forced into the closet while everybody else is coming out of the closet. Um, but I've watched a, a lot of homosexuals and I've watched them get so angry and so mad and they become very intolerant of our views, our perspective and our viewpoints. I watch it over and over again. And, um, and it's just amazing. It's just amazing the type. It's just like the Anti-Deflammation League. I mean, man, you mean to tell me we in a free country, we got to the point now that you can't even say what you want to say? Hey, now, don't get me wrong. Um, I believe in freedom of speech. Uh, the people up here exercise it all the time. People exercise it all the time. I may not agree with what you say. You're only going to get offended based on your level of intelligence. That's all, I mean, really, you have to, a lot of times you have to consider the source. A lot of times you got these ignorant, snagger tooth, tobacco spitting people that don't know nothing um, that calling you names. It, and that's all that they have in the world. That's all that they have in the world. Um, and, and that's all the strength that they have in the world. And, and you, if you're intelligent, what you do is you look at these people and you consider the source. Uh, you carefully weigh and evaluate the situation. Go, you know, do I want to engage this situation right here? Or do I want to let this pass because... Uh, these poop, these people are dumb, stupid, and dumb on purpose anyway. It ain't even worth it, the time. Um, I guess it's called picking your fights and choosing them wisely. But um, I believe in your right to freedom of speech. I also believe in other people's right to say back what they want to say. Um, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm just a man. I, I'm just, I guess I'm just different. That's all there's to it. I should, the one thing I am glad of, I'm glad that I've used self-autonomy. I'm glad that I, I have used independent thinking. I started evaluating everything because once I started finding one lie in the religion of Christianity, then it, from there it was like, how deep does the rabbit hole go? And then I come to find out this rabbit hole goes pretty damn deep. And Christianity is nothing but a religion. It's not even spoken about in this Bible right here. It's not even written about in this Bible. Use independent thinking. Use it and see. I come to find the truth. I find out that this is a history book about my people. And now that my eyes are wide open, they won't be shut again. Uh-uh. I'm going to tell the truth. It's going to be the truth straight way. It makes no difference to me whether you hear from there. Somebody says on, my, on one of my YouTube videos, they said, you know, Pastor Dow, you know, uh, uh, what how you answer this is going to determine whether I stay subscribed or not subscribed. First of all, let, let me get this straight. Number one, I don't care if you stay subscribed to this channel or not because it does not make me or break me either way, one way or the other. I'm here for the benefit, not for the masses, nor am I here to garner favor or, or for your opinion, your approval or your opinion. I don't give a damn about your opinion. Um, but I am here for those who have the, the, the spirit of understanding and their eyes open and those who are intelligent and thinking, independent people who, who has the spirit of truth. Because, you know, you have to have the spirit of truth to recognize the truth. You disagree with me, the burden of proof is on you, not on me. It's on you. You don't want to have to prove your stance and your position because as all this truth that I'm bringing, uh, you're going to have a lot to bring. And you better bring the home and the kitchen sink with you if you choose to engage um, in, 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 into a war dialogue with me on a particular subject that I'm speaking about. Because ignorance is just not going to suffice here in any way, shape, fashion, or form. It just ain't going to fly, period. Um, but you people got me all wrong. I'm not your typical Christian pastors to where I'm going to preach and teach and you're going to try to alter, manipulate um, uh, my speech based on your approval or disapproval uh, of what I say. No, you came on your own free will and subscribe, and you can leave on your own free will and subscribe, but I am not about to be manipulated, coerced, or dominated simply because you don't agree or disagree. I'm here for truth, and you don't like it, then you take your butt on. Go back over to the lies. Go back over to the lies. And, and usually I find out people who like like that, that cherry-picked everything and stuff that can't handle the truth, and neither will they get clear. On any subject matter, because they hold their religion, they hold their tradition, hold fast to it. They hold fast to it, rather than actually getting clear on the subject before they speak. Most people, they speak too fast. They speak presumptuously, and they're very daring. 
Um, only come to find out later on, it may not even take place then, maybe a few years later, that's, that then you have to actually surgically remove the foot out of your mouth because you found out you were wrong. It's just the truth. There are things that we have all believed. That's the reason why I have learned over the years to be swift to hear and slow to speak. But when I do speak, it's the truth. When I was young, I used to spout off my mouth. When I was ignorant and thought I knew something, I used to just give out my opinion. I don't do all that nowadays. No, I'm too old for that stuff now. I actually carefully weigh a situation. I listen very closely. Then I go back and study. I don't go study looking for... There's a lot of times I went and studied things and I went in there with the mindset of I'm right. I know I got it right. Only come to find out I was 100% wrong. Boy, what a train wreck that was. That was a literal train wreck. And um, I had a choice to make. I could either line up with the spirit of truth or I could support my lie as if it is the truth, give my opinion and, and, and preach to you from my emotion or either I could be a man of integrity or a man of honor and just tell you the truth for what it says and it makes no difference to me whether you like it or not because it's not open for the debate, discussion uh, or, or dialogue because the truth is the truth. Truth has been pressed down for centuries in this country and now it's rising to the top. Yes, it is. And anytime truth is under pressure, it will rise to the top. And I found out that all liars, they start running for their holes like moles crawl in because they can't handle the truth. So, yeah, I'm throwing out a cold red because you can't handle the truth. If I present to you some biblical topic because that's my area of expertise, you better believe that it's the truth. Uh, and I've done my due diligence. I'm just not on here giving out my sorry opinion like most Americans do telling you what my emotions and how I feel or the good old time religious tradition and stuff. No, I ain't about that. Uh -uh -uh. You don't want to be lied to. I don't want to be lied to. You hate liars. I hate liars. You hate hypocrites and cowards. I hate hypocrites and cowards. And it's just mutual. We may hate them different ways, but the fact of the matter is nobody likes being lied to. Nobody does. We hate them. Nobody likes people who speak evil against them. And and they continually keep doing it. And I'm watching. You got people that will speak evil against you. They then turn around and smile in your face. And then they so stupid that they don't even know that you know that they've been doing it. We have a lot of digressions in this video right here. Hope I said something to stimulate thought. Uh, but I am sure and I'm happy to know that I'm a Hebrew. I, I that that next to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, coming to the knowledge of that truth right there. That's probably has been one of the best awakenings that there ever has been. And I, I came into this awakening in the early 2000s, early 2000s. Um, and I transitioned into it using wisdom uh, because you turn around and start speaking against Christianity about around people who all, that's all they know. And you don't slowly transition and show them how this thing works and stuff. And you still won't lose people. You, truth is always going to make people scary. It's truth is going to make liars scary. They always going to go run. They, they because they have and, and 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 one thing about liars, I found out about liars, they're not open for debate, discussion, or dialogue. They are always seeking to affect change behind the scenes around those who are less informed than we are. Um, and 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 of course, when you're less informed, what are you basically dealing with? You're dealing with religion, tradition, uh, background, the way you've been raised. You're affected by your environment, and and that's just all they have left. And so they know that, so they keep and they depend on that, and and they use that to get you to ally with them. Only come to find out later on, a lot of you eating crow, and crow don't taste good. It don't taste good at all. Meanwhile, I started this video off on Michael Sam and uh, the NFL, and don't get me wrong. Um, Everybody has breath in their in their body that's living today. You have a life to live. You make your choices, your decisions. You live it the way you want to live it. And to hell with everybody else's opinions, feelings, and emotions. But you do need to know this. That once this breath go out of your body, you're going to be judged according to the deeds that were done in your flesh. And this is a very temporary state. But once this breath goes out of the body, that's when real life begins, and it's an eternal life. And since some of you are already turned over to a reprobate mind, since some of you are already, you can't be convinced because you've bitten other fruit of lies of being dumb, dormant, docile, demoralized, and demonized, and nobody can do nothing against it, 
It ain't going to be until the breath go out of your body, then the regrets come. You're going to find out that this man right here has told you the truth. If somebody asked me the other day, Pastor, how in the world are you so passionate the truth? Because I've had an experience. I've had an experience with the creator of the universe. That's the reason why I'm so passionate when it comes to truth. I, I didn't have a religious experience. I had a personal experience with the creator of the universe that from that point on, it greatly altered and changed my mind from that point on. Greatly has. And he, he has had a lot of influence um, on my life ever since. Uh, and I figured out a long, long time ago, it is we ought to obey Yah rather than man. Um, and most people, uh, you're so controlled by the fear of man, you can't even live your life. You can't even live life and live it honestly because you care about what other people think. You care about what other people say. You care about what the society around you thinks and say. And you're very weak. You're very weak. Um, but hey, that's your choice. That's your decision. But we all are going to stand before the creator of the universe. Um, and then and only then will some of you be convinced that Pastor Dow was right. But it will be too late for many of you because I'm going to be ruling in the kingdom. And the Bible clearly says that when the king comes, he's going to rule with a rod of iron. And I'm going to be right there with him. I'm going to be holding that rod of iron. You better believe it. Well, hey, uh, no doubt about it. This is the truth. It's not open for debate, discussion. And uh, know it, hey, if you want to know what I'm talking about, get into the book right here. Find out what it says and get clear. Don't go on there with your preconceived ideas and notions thinking that you know everything. Come to find out you don't know nothing. And, and, I, and you know, do not argue because wisdom is too high for a fool. Do not argue with people who simply will not do the research, do their due diligence to get clear on any subject. Um, but hey, the whole environment of America is changing. And it's changing right before our very eyes. And you're not, in 10 more years, you're not even going to know this country. Things are changing so fast in 10 years. You watch and see. Mark my words. Y'all have a good weekend.